Bible with you tonight. I'm going to keep you in about three and a half minutes. Open it to Acts, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter. Whether people realize it or not, we are living in the last days. I've heard some people say we're living in the last of the last days. Yeah. On God's clock, there's not much time left. On man's clock, you know, sometimes we think, well, that's a long time. But I'm sure if you ask someone that's 40, they'll tell you, it sure doesn't seem like it's been 40 years. If you ask someone that's 50 or 60 or 80, they'll tell you, don't know where time has went. We seem to think, well, that's a real long time. If somebody lives to be, say, 100 years old, they think, wow, that's a long time. But really, it's not that much time. A couple, turn around a couple times and your life is nearly over. But we are living in the last days. And Peter says something here on the day of Pentecost. They've been filled with the Holy Ghost and the uh, gift of tongues has came and lit upon all of them. They're speaking in an unknown tongue. And the men of the city there that, have been, that had came from all parts of the earth marveled that they heard them speaking in their own language. And Peter would step up here, the Bible says standing up, and would say these words in Acts 2 and 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, because as we know, a lot of them thought, well, those guys are just drunk. But Peter said, They are not drunk, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And he goes on to say this, And it shall come to pass in the last days. Now I believe that we're living in the last days. I'm not a doomsday preacher, but I'm telling you there's a doomsday coming. Judgment will be poured out. Jesus called it a time of tribulation. Jacob's trouble, a time of tribulation, never has been before, never shall be again, a time like that is going to come upon the face of the earth. Peter said, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men, old men shall dream dreams. I was beginning to think I was an old man because all I ever got anymore was dreams and no visions. Till this past February the 1st, and I guess I'm about middle aged because I had a dream. That turned out to end, it ended in a vision. So I guess that makes me middle aged. I'm not too young. I'm not too old. Amen. But Peter said that the Lord says, In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your men shall your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now listen to what else it says. On my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heavens in the heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and terrible day, great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be Saved. Now we see here in the last days that Peter, proclaiming the word of God as spoken of by the prophet Joel, says that God's sons and daughters will prophesy. That there will be dreams and visions. That young men shall see visions and old men shall dream dreams. And the main emphasis of God's message from here on out, folks, is going to be the coming of the Lord and the end of time. That there is a heaven to gain, Brother Dwayne, and a hell to shun. I still believe there's a hell. I know people don't like to talk about it. We don't like to think about it. Preachers don't like to preach about it. But as much as there's a heaven, there is a hell. And God's warning for mankind is get ready. Because judgment's coming. What God showed me in the vision that I had just a few days ago, night cometh. Night is on the horizon. The end of time is at hand. I used to hear whenever I was just a child in Brother Hinton's church, 
someone would testify and they'd say that that uh, behold I stand at the door and that that I'm, I'm my coming is near it's even at the door mm -hmm. I remember hearing that over and over and as a child I thought oh he's coming tonight it's gonna happen right now <clears throat> and you can look at it with man's eyes and think well that's been 40 years ago roundabout that's been a long time well on one hand it might have been but on the other hand it's not time does not stand still for anybody it goes right on by as a matter of fact, it seems like it just keeps getting faster and faster. It just seems like the time just get, just slips away. And in these last days, God's going to give people visions and dreams and messages of prophecy that has to do with the end times, that has to do with the fact that Jesus is coming. And even if He doesn't come, what we would call soon, it's going to be soon. It may not be soon as far as our calendar goes. But none of us in here, or none of you out there, that watch or that are listening are promised your next breath. I may not be able to convince you today that Jesus is coming and you might scoff at it. The Bible says that there will be scoffers in the last days that says, where, where is he? Where's His coming? Where's the promise of His coming? You've been talking about Him coming and it hasn't happened. Okay, I'll give you for just a moment. Not because of my unbelief, but because of yours. Suppose there's no rapture. Suppose that Jesus isn't coming back in your lifetime. Let me talk to you for a minute about death. There's not a one of us in here tonight outside of the rapture taking place that's going to escape death. Outside of Jesus coming back, there's not a one of us, under, not a one of you in the sound of my voice, not a one of us in this place tonight that are not going to die sooner or later. And none of us, regardless of your age, regardless of your health, are promised tomorrow. None of us. So whether you think these are the last days for the world, you know, we hear people all the time saying, the end of the world's coming. It's going to happen on this date. It's going to happen on that date. And when it doesn't happen, people scoff and mock and they laugh and they say, see, I told you. Yeah, but one day it will. Well, let's lay that aside for a moment. One day your last day will come. One day your last breath will be breathed in your body. The last heartbeat that you have will beat that one last time and your life will be over. What then? Because the question, the question still remains. Whether you go away with the rapture, whether you believe that there's a second coming, or whether you believe the Lord's coming back, or whether you go away with the grave, the question's still the same. Are you ready to meet the Lord? The most important thing today is not how much money you have in your pocket. It's not how much education you have in your brain. It's how does your soul and your heart stand with Jesus? How's your relationship with Him? The most important thing tonight is not that we go out of here and we get into a new vehicle. The most important thing tonight is not that we drive to a nice home. Or that we have a bank account that's overflowing or our stock portfolio is just booming. The most important thing is are you right with the Lord? And there is a sin today. And this is what I really want to talk about for just a few minutes. There is a sin today that has doomed more souls to hell than any other. And when I say that, Brother Rodney, you might think, well, he's talking about murder. He's talking about adultery. He's talking about homosexuality. He's talking about lying, cheating, stealing, wrath, murmurings, complainings, whatever you might think of. The most dangerous thing for mankind today, and the devil knows it, is the spirit of neglect. Putting off till tomorrow what you should have took, taken care of today. More people in hell tonight regretting the fact that they didn't accept Jesus while they had a chance than any other thing. More people in hell today wishing they had not said, well, I'll get right next week. I'll get right later in life. I've told this story before. I'll tell it to you again. Brother Paul Levine was preaching the revival. There was a 16-year-old girl sitting on the end of one of the pews a few seats back. And he said he was given the altar call and he could see conviction on that young girl's face. Tears rolling down her cheeks. 16 years old. And he said, finally, and she wasn't coming, so he said, I, I felt I had to go back and talk to her. He went back to her seat and he said, 
Do you know Jesus? Have you given your life over to the Lord? She said, no preacher. But I'm 16. I've got plenty of time. I'll get right later. I'll get right some other service. I'll get right the next revival maybe. I want to do some living first. He said he, after he pleaded with her, wasn't doing any good, he walked away. Revival service closed. He went back to his motel room and as he slept there, two or three o'clock in the morning, whatever time, the pastor of the church he was holding revival at called and said, Brother Levine, you know that 16-year-old girl that you talked to tonight? He said, yes, I remember it all too well. He said, she's dead. And Brother Levine said, what, what happened? He said, five miles down from the church, she took a curve going too fast and hit a tree head on. Left out of this life, as far as we know, lost and undone without God. Why? Because the devil convinced her to wait to later. You can get right later. You see, that's, that's all he has to do. He doesn't have to get you, Brother Tommy, to be a drunk. He doesn't have to get you to be a whoremonger. He doesn't have to get you to be a killer, a murderer, a liar, a cheater, a thief. All he has to do is convince you. Just don't get right today. Just don't accept Jesus today. Just don't put your faith in Jesus today. Someone told a story of the devil got all of his crew together and said, we need to come up with a new plan. We need some way to come against man like we've never had before, or at least in a stronger way. And one of the demons said, oh, I've got it, boss. We'll, we'll tell him God's dead. He's not real. Never has been. He said, well, that won't. He said, that'll work for some. But we need something that'll really get the masses. One of them said, well, we just tell them that Jesus, He never existed. Or if He did, He died and that's it. He said, no, that won't work for some of them. They've had an experience. They know better. we got to get something that'll get the masses. Deceive them all. Then one demon said, well, I got it. We'll tell them God's real. He's alive. Jesus came. He died on the cross. He was resurrected. He died for their sins. By this time, the devil's thinking, wait a minute. I think we got this guy in the wrong place. He don't need to be in this meeting. But then he said, but we'll tell him all that's true. But we'll just convince him to wait till later to get right with God. And the enemy liked that so well that he's still doing that today in real time. That was a made-up story, but boy, it could have it could have happened. I was what a plan. Sure. Sure, let Brother Dwayne, let him believe in the Bible. Let him believe that Jesus is real. Let him believe that he should get right. But let's just convince him to wait till it's too late. Oh, what a plan by the enemy. The sin of neglect has taken more souls to hell than all the alcohol that's ever been brewed. Because they just keep putting it off. Good people. Busy with life. Never realizing that when they stand before Him, the most important thing is not going to be their education. Not going to be the money that they have. Not going to be their status in life. But their relationship with Jesus. And all the enemy has to do is get you to put it off till it's too late. The spirit of neglect. All you have to... And, I'll tell you what neglect means. It means to think little of it, to pay no attention to it. It means to give little attention or respect to it. It means to disregard. It means to leave it undone. It means to leave it unattended through carelessness. It means to make light of it. It means that, oh, we'll do it later. We'll get right later. Do you remember the people that were invited to the marriage supper? What they do? The Bible says they begin to make light of it. They wouldn't go. They begin to neglect the invitation. Oh, my, my, my. You talk about dangerous ground. If you sit through an altar call and you neglect the invitation, you're living on moral time. You're living on dangerous ground. I wouldn't want to leave this church house tonight. If you're out there under the sound of our voice listening, I wouldn't want another minute to go by with me saying, I'll get right later. I'll do it later. I'll accept Jesus later. Because you may not have a later. There are people 
in the pits of hell today that have no more opportunity. The rich man that died, he would have loved to have another opportunity. He would have loved to have another opportunity. And when he saw there was no hope for him, he begged for somebody to go tell his brothers, don't neglect this any longer. Get right while you have a chance. The preacher, that's a hard message. That's the message of the last day. We must get ready. Whether it's for, for the coming of the Lord or whether it's just for the simple fact that we may not be here tomorrow. Ask yourself that question. Not if I died right now, if it was the last breath that I took, if my heart stopped beating, where would I go? Where would I be? Have I neglected the condition of my soul while being so wrapped up and tied up with everything else in the world? Have I allowed the enemy to play that trick on me? Have I allowed the spirit of neglect to grab a hold of my heart and cause me to neglect my relationship with Jesus? The most important thing today is whether we know Him and our relationship with Him. Not all the other things that the world has to offer. And the spirit of neglect will cause you to miss it. I've got a lot more scriptures, but we're going to talk about that some more Sunday morning. I just wanted to give you a little bit of it tonight. Someone else have something before we go?